preaching and teaching, and I like, uh, I like reading through the Old Testament. Man, I do. I, I like that. Um, what a thing that is, that you can get in there and it show you some stuff. And um, some people want to just, you know, kick out the Old Testament, but I'm telling you, boy, there's some good stuff in there for, for us to learn and for us to, uh, for us to uh, live by. I mean, in that sense of, of don't do this, amen, <laughs> as our example, and, and this is what you should do, and things like that. But uh, uh, what, a, what an interesting book uh, Joshua is, where Joshua has taken, and, uh, taken the lead after Moses has gone off the scene. And uh, I think Friday night we talked a little bit about some of that stuff where, uh, about Joshua in the book of Joshua and uh, some things that took place there. But... Uh, um, we, uh, we, we, uh, we see that through this thing that Joshua has, has brought the Israelites across the Jordan and, uh, and Moses has gone off the scene and Joshua is the leader now. He's the one in, in charge. And as he's in charge, he's uh, setting these things up for, uh, for uh, uh, the Israelites to get their inheritance. And so as they get their inheritance, they get, uh, they get pushed or, or put into these places and and uh, as they start to take the land. And you want to find out why that uh, they have had so much trouble in some situations over there. You read the first chapter of the book of Judges. And you find out that whenever they took those lands and took those cities and took those places, God told them to drive the inhabitants out. And they didn't do that. <laughs> and so they were, as the Bible puts it, and as we've preached uh, and taught on, uh, on the thorns and thistles and things like that, uh, the curse, amen, these people and these inhabitants became a thorn in their flesh and a thorn in their side and things like that because they didn't get them out of there like God told them to. Sounds a lot like us, doesn't it? God says, I want you to get this out of your life and, and, and everything. And sure enough, we'll, we'll say, Lord, I'm sorry. But a few days later, you know what? It comes up again. Why? Because we didn't get it out. We just, we just kind of swept it under the rug and kind of moved it around, but we didn't get it out. And, uh, you know, that's the way they do cancer is uh, if they find that you've got, a, you've got cancer, what they, what they do is they try to go in there and cut the stuff out. Why? Because it'll come back if you don't. And uh, so that's what happened with, uh, with almost every one of them. And you can read there in the first chapter of the book of Judges and you'll find it says they took the land and they, but they didn't drive them out. They didn't drive these out and they didn't drive these out. So we've got to pay attention to those things, amen. So uh, here in Joshua 22, we find that uh, the, battles, uh, the battles that uh, the, these had been facing, we find that uh, there, was, there was the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half -tribe, one of the half-tribes of Manasseh that decided they wanted to land on this side of Jordan. And so, uh, but they went over and fought oh, uh, with the rest of the Israelites. And so now they, they've... they've, they've uh, Got the land. They're in Cana, Canaan, and they got the land. And so now uh, Joshua has given and distributed the land. And he says, uh, okay, you Gadites and Reubenites and you have tribe of Manasseh. Y'all can go back over there and you can build your houses. You can build your, your, your homes and you can do that. Now that you've helped us get this, you can go back. So they've gone back. And so here we are in chapter 22. And, and I'll tell you, and I'll read just a little bit here. Of, of some of this, where he says, Then Joshua, in verse 1, called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice and all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And he says, And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren, as he hath promised them. Therefore now return ye, and get you into your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses and the servant of the Lord uh, gave you on the other side of Jordan. Now I want you to skip over, if you will, and I want you to read, uh, read to you here in uh, the last verse, in chapter uh, 22, in verse number 34. I want to read this verse and then we'll have prayer and try to give you uh, what the Lord's given us. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed, for it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God. I want to look at this thing about this altar here named Ed. And I want to, I want to try to give us some thoughts here this morning 
about this altar. Father, we need you this morning. We ask you, Lord, that you'd help us. Thank you so much for these precious babies up here singing, and what a blessing that is. And uh, Lord, just the proof of them singing of the song is so true. And uh, what a blessing that is. Our teenagers and young people just helping and singing and doing those things. What a true blessing that really is. Thank you, Lord, for these folks that are here this morning. And, uh, Father, I pray that uh, I wouldn't disappoint you, first of all. And, uh, Lord, I'm just asking that you would come in and, Lord, help me to step aside. And, God, the, the, the message would be your message. And, God, you'd touch hearts. We sure love you. Forgive us where we fail you. We plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on the message and all in all hearts and the things be done, be done to your glory and your honor. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. So we've got this thing here <clears throat> where that the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed. Well, how did this thing come about? Okay, well, they're on this side of Jordan. You can't forget that. They're, they're separated from all the other tribes, okay? Uh, you know, in the beginning of the book of Joshua, you've got them getting the, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant and all these things, and they're going across Jordan. And then across Jordan, well, that's where they, uh, they have the Battle of Jericho. I think all the kids have been taught in Sunday school about Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. Is that not right? <laughs> All the adults probably need that, Drew. They're not, they're not responding, amen. They don't know what I'm talking about. But, uh, but uh, anyway, we've got the Battle of Jericho going on there at the beginning of the book. Why? Because the Israelites, they had to cross the Jordan, and the first place they come to was Jericho, and they were going to take Jericho. And so there's that battle. Well, the, the Reubenites and Gadites and a half-tribe of Manasseh, they decided that the land on this side of Jordan looked pretty good, and it would fit their family. It would fit what they wanted to do. So they said, uh, can we have this as our inheritance? And Moses said, yeah, go ahead, and, 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 and you can have that, but you've got to go and fight with the rest of us. You can't just separate yourself and leave us. So here they are. They're making homestead over here on this side of Jordan. I have many thoughts about that. Is it right? I don't know. I guess so. God blessed them. God took care of that. Uh, you know, but, but there was a separation there, and there was something going on that, uh, that was, just, uh, it was just different. So what they did, what they did was they built an altar there. And now the real altar, uh, you know, was in the temple of God. It was over there on the other side of Jordan, the real altar. And so uh, uh, they built this altar on this side, and it looked just like this one over here. And so uh, let's look at some of these things about this altar here. I want to tell you that uh, uh, we, we, we find that there's some things about this altar. Number one, if you'll look down there, verse number 26, the Bible says this. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you, our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. So I want to show you first thing about this altar that they built here. We find in verse number 26 that it wasn't a real functioning altar. <laughs> you see it? <laughs> I mean, it was an altar, uh, but, it, but it wasn't a functioning altar. It wasn't an altar where they burned sacrifices. It was not an altar uh, where, the, where the, they did the things that they would do on, on the altar in the temple over there. Do y'all follow me? Y'all see what's going on here? So I'll tell you that this altar was not a real functioning altar. Uh, there, there's no fire there. Amen? There's no fire there. And, and, and since there's no fire at this altar, that means there's no judgment there. Yeah. Amen? Fire is a type of judgment, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a type of judgment. We find that uh, all through the scriptures that uh, fire is a type of judgment, and God, one of these days, is going to uh, send fire on, on the earth, amen, and, and burn up the place. And uh, we see that in Second Peter chapter 2. The Bible says in verse 3, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So you got the fire of hell, and you got judgment in this thing. The Bible says in Second uh, Peter chapter two verse nine, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. He says in Second Peter two or Second Peter three verse seven. 
But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire, he says, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Can I tell you that this altar that they built had no fire? <laughs> It had no fire. That's what he said. It's not for burnt offerings. It's, it's, it's not for that. It's not for sacrifice. It's just an altar. Isn't that something? <laughs> it's just an altar. And so that's what he's saying there. Uh, you know, you talk about judgment. Even the Christian, I know that our judgment on salvation, about salvation, had, we've already been judged for that. I'm not going to be judged again to get to heaven. Amen. I, I was judged at Calvary. Amen. I accepted the Lord Jesus as my Savior, October 27, 1974, and I've been saved ever since, according to the Scriptures. Amen. Not because I'm good, not because I'm this wonderful person, not because of I've done everything right, but it's because He did everything right. It's because of my Savior. Amen. It's because of what Jesus did. We sang this morning about what can wash away my sin. Amen. Uh, I mean, we sing about the power that's in the blood. And, and so we talk about the blood of Jesus. Nothing can wash away your sin because nothing has the power except for the blood of Jesus. Amen. So this is not a real functioning altar. The judgment that a child of God would have to go through when they get to heaven is called the judgment seat of Christ. And it's judging your works of how uh, you, you kept what God asked for you to do. How that you was a good uh, witness testimony. The works you did. Not to get into heaven, but the works you did as a child of God. Amen. The works you did in living a good Christian life. Listen, you're already there. But it's going to determine your rewards. It's going to determine what God uh, has for you there. It's going to be determined and based on our life we live after we've been saved. And so you find in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 13, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. You see that thing? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. What is that? It's judgment. It's a judgment. Amen. And that fire uh, on the altar was a type of judgment. And we see here that there was no fire on this altar. It wasn't a good functioning altar. Why? Because there was no fire. Amen. There was no fire. And so we find there that, uh, that uh, it, it, it's just not a functioning, a, a real functioning altar. They said, hey, we're just going to build an altar here because y'all were over there and we're over here and, and, and we're going to build this altar here so that when people uh, come in contact with where we live, they'll see this altar. Amen. They'll see this altar and they'll see that we're part of y'all. But it wasn't a real functioning altar. Are y'all kind of getting this? <laughs> I mean, it's just an odd thing, but there it is. All right, I'll tell you a second thing. Let's move quickly. Y'all want to move quickly? Amen. Brother Orville, can we, can we move quickly? I'm glad you're here this morning. I've been asking them for extra points and everything, and they just sat there, and I just try to get it from Brother Orville there. I'm glad you're here this morning. Good to see you, brother. Amen. I, I tell you a second thing. It, it's not just that it's not a real functioning altar, but it only had an appearance of a real altar. Amen. It just looked like one. Amen. It just looked like one. Uh, look up there in verse 10, Joshua 22, verse 10. The Bible says, And when they came into the borders of Jordan, it says, that, uh, that are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, built there an altar by Jordan. Notice what the Bible says. A great altar to see to. In other words, man, it, it, looked, it looked great. <laughs> It was a great altar to look at. Amen. It, 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 it looked good, but there was nothing in it. There was nothing to it. It only had the appearance. You know what Jesus talked to the uh, Pharisees? And you know what he said in Matthew 23, verse 27? He said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. <laughs> Isn't that what all Hollywood is? They ain't nothing but hypocrites. <laughs> Why? Because they're, they're, they're acting and playing something they're really not. That's what a hypocrite is. This altar looks like something that it really is not. It just has the appearance. But he told the, the Pharisees, he said, he said, you hypocrites, amen? And he said this, he said, For, all, for ye are all like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones. Well, I mean, you look good. You look good on the outside, but as we said on number one, it's, you're not a real functioning altar. You look good on the outside. You got the appearance of being something that you're really not. Boy, does that not fit a lot of our churches today? 
I mean, really, does that not fit? I mean, you go by and you see this great, grand, wonderful, beautiful place, amen? And, and man, it's just wonderful. You go in the place and, man, all the, the, the stained glass. And, and if churches have them, hey, praise the Lord. And you see all this fine stuff and you see everything else. But you, but you get in the church and you find that uh, it's full of dead men's bones. Amen. Is this too hard? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's what's going on here. They're saying, hey, uh, we, 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 not, we, we don't have this functioning altar here, but I tell you what, let's just build one that looks like what the real thing is, and that way people will, will, will see that maybe we're just like they are. I know a lot of Christians that way. I mean, they truly may be saved, and they're putting on the dog. You ever heard that saying? They're just putting on the dog. I mean, they just, they just look the part, but they're really not in it. Amen. So they had an appearance of a real altar, but it wasn't a real altar. <laughs> Why? There was no fire in it. There was no sacrifice on it. You know the altar is a place of sacrifice. Somebody said one time, if you'll come to the altar, it'll alter your life. Amen. <laughs> And man, it will, done in the right fashion, done in the right way. I mean, that's what an altar is for, amen. So we need, we need to realize that. That We need to realize that, uh, you know, uh, that, that sometimes we could get into that mode. We could get into that place. So if we're not careful, we can walk the talk, uh, walk the walk, talk the talk, amen. We can look the part, man. I, I, do I look like a preacher? Amen. My wife dresses me. Amen. <laughs> I should look as best I can. Amen. <laughs> I, know, I know it's a stretch. But anyway, we can look the part. I remember whenever we was in Arizona, we was out there, and, and uh, we was in uh, uh, Winslow, and uh, we was over there at Brother Jonathan's church one of the first times, and his oldest boy now, uh, Samuel, right? Uh, he's probably, what, 13 now or so? But he was, he was probably... He was probably seven, eight years old, and uh, he was sitting on one of the front rows, and I come walking by him, and, 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 and uh, we were out there uh, singing and, and preaching and stuff, and so I come walking by him, and he was, and boy, he had on a tie, and he had on his coat, man, he looked sharp, <laughs> and I looked at him, and I said, man, you look good, I said, I said, are you preaching tonight, and he looked at me, and he goes, I'm just a little boy, <laughs> so he said, okay, <laughs> Man, but he looked sharp, amen. And there's so many people that look the part, amen. There's so many people that, I mean, they'll come into church every Sunday, amen. They'll come in and they look the part. But boy, there's just nothing on the inside. I mean, there's a lot. Do you believe there's a lot of lost church members? I believe that there's people that come to church every Sunday and they don't have nothing on the inside. They're full of dead men's bones. And man, they look good. They look like Christians. They look like what Christians should look like. I mean, they have the right haircut, man. They got the right clothes on. They got the right boots on, amen. <laughs> I mean, they, got, they just do it right. But in reality, they're just good moral people. And they'll die and go to hell if they don't get saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so we find that, man, it just only had an appearance. Man, they're beautiful on the outside, but within, full of dead men's bones. Amen. I, I, I have a third point here. I find that not only that, but I find that uh, 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 it, it didn't do anything. Listen to me. It didn't do anything for their sin. Amen. Didn't do anything for their sin. Why? Because it wasn't a functioning altar. <laughs> Why not? I mean, you know, it was, just, it was just an appearance of thing. Look down there in, in verse number 28. Uh, chapter 22, verse 28. It says here, Therefore said we that it shall be when they should say, uh, so say to us, uh, uh, he, he says, or to our generations in the time to come that we may say again, Behold, look at, look at, you see this? The pattern of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings, you see that? Not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness, uh, he said, between us and you. You see, it, it, it did nothing for their sin. Why? No fire, no sacrifices, no judgment. All it did was look good. <laughs> it looked like something that it was not. But it didn't help their sin at all. Amen? It couldn't do anything for their sin. Why? It wasn't a real altar. People come to church sometimes, and, and man, they'll even come down to an old-fashioned altar. And man, they'll... They'll do these things and, and all that stuff. And, and, and they'll act like they're doing good. They'll act all these things. But I'm telling you, uh, they, 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 they turn over a new leaf and they try to act good. They'll quit their cussing, amen. 
they'll, they'll quit their corrals and they'll quit all these things and boy, they'll have the appearance and boy, the, the moral side of them. Man, I know some good moral people that have never been saved. I know some good moral people and man, they just act apart and look apart and all these things. But you know what? Coming to that altar, it did nothing for them. I've heard testimony and witness of people that have been in churches and have been to church camps as their young people and, and, and kids and stuff. And, and they would come to a church camp and they would come down to an altar. And as they grew older, they realized that they weren't truly saved. The, the gospel started being preached and the Spirit started working on them. And they realized that when they were a little child, they didn't really understand what they did. And so later in life, they got saved. What happened? They went to an altar, but it did nothing for their sin. So we find that uh, that's what's going on here. Why? Because this altar is without fire. Amen. There was no power to cover their sin. There was no power to take their sin. And, and folks, I'm telling you, that's what's happening in so many churches. I thank God that we were able to do something here and, and spread this thing out. We got more room at the altar. Amen. We got more places for people to come and, and for them to pray and for them to get right with God and for them to get saved if they need to be saved. But I'm telling you, in a lot of places, in a lot of places, it, it, they're, they're taking the altar out. They're, they're, they're doing away with the altar. And I'm telling you, folks, the altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of judgment. It's a place to where we need to be coming and meeting with God. Sometimes it's not just a physical place. Sometimes that altar may be right there in your heart. But it needs to be real. It needs to be real. It don't need to be just a pious place. A uh, 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 bowing of your head and like the, 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 the fellow over the New Testament. He raised his head and, uh, to heaven and said, I, I'm glad I'm not like this Samaritan over here. I'm glad I'm not like the rest of them. Lord, I tithe and, and Lord, I give to the poor and, and I knew all of these things and I'm glad I'm not like the rest of them. And then there's this old uh, Samaritan poor guy over here and he's saying, he's saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus asked the question, he said, which one of these do you think is justified? <laughs> Amen. It's the one that bowed in his heart and, and realized that he was a sinner, amen. Not the one that did all these other things. He didn't have the right altar. There was no power in that. But boy, he looked good. He looked good. He looked like he should have uh, been a Christian. He looked like he should have been a, 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 a one of these uh, leaders and all this stuff. But I'm telling you, if you study up a little bit on the Pharisees, you find that where their origin, uh, originality, where they came from and where they originated from, you'll find why they did some of the things they did. They actually originated from the Dark Ages. Amen. Yeah. They're in between the, the, the Testaments, the 400 years of darkness. Uh, God didn't speak to anybody. So from Malachi to Matthew, you find that there was darkness in there. And, and what did they do? They started just like Adam and Eve. Whenever they were messed up, they, they got them some fig leaves, tried to cover up their sin. What is that? That's a, that's a false religion. <laughs> Amen. That's a, that's a man-made religion. That was man-made clothes that they were trying to hide and trying to do those things. And God had to come along and kill a lamb, amen, and give them some skin, amen, to, to cover up their nakedness, just like you and I. We couldn't do anything about our sin. We had to go to a place to where that uh, uh, he could, he, a lamb had to die, amen, and he covered us in his blood. And once he covered us in his blood, man, our sin got washed away. When Jesus sees you, he sees the blood, Amen. If you've been saved, amen. Is this all right? Everybody okay? I mean, I'm telling you, uh, what a thing. That, that, that They build an altar, and all it was is just a, an appearance of things. Amen. They build an altar just so they can look like they're associated. And they were. They were associated. They were the Israelites. They were a part of that thing. But they separated themselves. And, they, and, and because they stayed on this side, they, wanted, they didn't want to lose that connection. And, and, and so they built that altar to make it look like that, hey, we're doing the same things they are. We're a part of them. And you know something? You can do that. I can do that. We can do some of these things, talk the right talk, amen. We can dress the right dress, and we can act sometimes the way that we ought to act and look this part. But in, on the inside, are you really, are you really fixed with God? Are you really right with God? Are you really alive because of the Holy Spirit? And you've been to an altar, and you've let God take care of that. Are are you real this morning? Amen. They only had an appearance of a real altar. But it didn't do anything for their sin. <laughs> Amen. Acting the part's not going to make it real. 
I find it so silly, and, and I really, I don't need to say the word stupid, but, uh, so I won't say it, amen, but I find it real silly that we've got these Hollywood people telling us how we ought to raise our kids. Somebody has this crazy idea that if, if one of these hypocritical Hollywood people, uh, you know, uh, tell how they do things or, or tell how they raise their kids or tell us, you know, the decisions we'll be making, we think there's a lot of credit in, in because they're just, they're just, you know, they're world known because of their, their stars and, and all this stuff. Folks, why would you want to listen to a hypocrite? <laughs> Their whole life is full of hypocrisy. They don't even know who they are. One, one movie, they're acting like this. And then there's another movie, they're acting like this. And they're shacking up with this one. And then they're shacking up with, oh, it's just play. No, it ain't play. It's hellish. It's devilish, amen. It's satanic. And I'm going to listen to them? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't put no stock in that stuff. Amen. I'm telling you, only appearance... And it did nothing for their sin. But here's the last point this morning. (laughs) Notice as we see that where they put this thing, where they put this thing on that side of Jordan. On this side of Jordan. They they, They did it on this side of Jordan. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of how they tried to make God fit in their world. Amen. Well, well, this is how we live, so God, if you want to fit in it, you're just going to have to go by what we decide. This is, just, this is the way we're going to do it. These are the songs that we're going to sing, and God, if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, then, then you just, you know, I mean, right? Uh, God, uh, you know, I've found another book that's supposed to be better than the one, and it corrects this book, and, and I, you know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, I could care less. I'm going to make God fit in my life instead of my life changing to fit Him. And that's what they... Are y'all okay? <laughs> that's what they did. They're saying, hey, we're staying here, so we're going to build this altar and it look like, it, but it's not going to be... You know, it's not going to have power. And you know something? You can do this. You can change all that stuff. And you know what you'll do? You'll lose your power. You'll lose your walk with God. You'll lose your strength with God. You'll lose your relationship with God. Why? Because you're trying to make God fit your lifestyle. You're trying to make God fit into what you want to do. Instead of you getting in the book, instead of you getting in the place to where God's at and saying, I'm going to change my life to fit what He likes. Yeah. And one of these days, they're going to stand and they're going to look at Him. Back over there in the book of Zechariah in chapter number 12, the Israelites, they're going to see Him come and He's going to land on this earth at the second advent, Revelation chapter 19, and men, Lord of Lord and King of Kings, amen. And He's going to stand up there and they're going to look upon Him whom they have pierced. And they're going to look at Him and they're going to say, Man, we missed it. That is the true Messiah. Man, I wished I had done something. I wished I had this, or I wished I had that. It says in Romans chapter 14, the Bible says over there in verses 11 and verse 12, it says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Amen. And they're going to bow down to Him, and they're going to say, Hey, I, I, you are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. Amen. And you know something? You know, I... I Moses said it was all right for them to do that. God blessed them for doing that. I'm not, I'm not criticizing them for staying over there. I'm just using these things as illustration to say, hey, if we're not careful, we're, we're going to build us an altar somewhere, and we're going we're gonna to make this altar look like everybody else, you know, every church. We're going to build us a sanctuary somewhere, and we're going to play like we're connected with God. And we're going to play like we do the part. We're going to act like we do the part. And, 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 if, and, if, and, if, and if what we do is not according to the Word of God, well then, well then, you know, hey, God, you're either just going to have to get in or God, you're going to have to get out. That's what's going on. That's what every other church in America is doing. Amen. Amen. That's just what's happening. I don't mean for this to be a hard message. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> That's what the Bible teaches. That's what it's showing us, man. That's what it's saying. So you know something? They built the altar. And y'all remember Finney Haas, right? Y'all remember who Finney Haas was, right? Man, he was a real man. 
Phinehas was a real man. I, I, that was last Sunday's message. I won't redo that. But, but Phinehas was actually the priest at this time. And man, the Israelites that was on that side of Jordan, they said, hey, Phinehas, man, we've got to go talk to them people. Because they thought that they built that altar to do the sacrifices and stuff on, and they really didn't. They had the right heart and the right motive. But can I tell you something? Sometimes you can have the right heart and the right motive and do the wrong thing. Amen. It's easy to do. <laughs> you didn't mean for it to turn out that way, right? I mean, you didn't mean for it to happen that way, but it just did. Yeah. It just did. And, and, and man, it just, it, this, thing, this thing has the appearance of stuff just messing up all over the place. I mean, it just has the appearance of things just could go crazy at any time. Amen. You know, I, I'm really done, but uh, you know why Moses, why Moses uh, took, that, took that pole and put that serpent on it and, of brass, and, and man, he, he put that thing up there, and, and the people that were bitten by those serpents, man, you know what he did after that? He took that thing and, and destroyed it. Why? Because the people would start worshiping that thing. You, you know what God did with Moses whenever, whenever uh, uh, it was time for him to die in the latter part of the book of Deuteronomy? The Bible told, told Moses, said, I want you to come up here on this mountain. And he said, I'm going to kill you. You're, you're dying. Amen. <laughs> and so he carried him up there, and guess what? Moses died. <laughs> and, and when Moses died, the Bible says that God buried him. And, and, and if you're reading the book of Jude, you'll find over there that the angel, uh, Gabriel, had a confrontation with Satan over the body of, of, of Moses. You know why God wouldn't let the body of Moses linger? and why he could? Because just like they're doing over there, and, and the Roman Catholics over there are doing, they're taking their uh, popes and taking their uh, sainthood and all that stuff, and they're worshiping those people. Hey, they couldn't do nothing for anybody's sin. Amen. The priesthood went out when Jesus died on the cross. Amen. Hey, you can't do nothing for my sin. That man's a lost sinner just like anybody else is and needs to be saved. You're saying you shouldn't talk about that. Why? They're talking about you. <laughs> Amen. Jesus said, you're like whited sepulchers. He said, man, you're beautiful on the outside, but on the inside you're full of dead men's bones. Amen. The appearance of things looks right. Looks good. Looks like it may be a part of it. Amen. My daddy uh, was a car salesman. And, uh, and he sold cars. And, uh, and he was actually a preacher and a car salesman. Some people don't think that you can be saved and be a car salesman. But, but he was. Amen. <laughs> but he used to tell me, and Greg, you'll know what I'm talking about. You're, you're a sales guy. Amen. I never was a sales guy. I never could do it. But uh, I, I just didn't want to, I just didn't, I just couldn't. So it ain't for everybody. But it ain't for me. But my brothers, all them were, my dad, they, I just, but I just, I just didn't want to do that. I just didn't feel, but you know what my dad said? He sold cars, and you know what he said? He said, son, he said, people buy with their eyes. And they do. People, you, know, you ever notice that's why they put the cars out there on the front row? I mean, they shine them up, they look good, they have the lights flashing so it'll get your attention and all that stuff. People buy with their eyes. He said, he, said, he said this. He said, you know, he said, you could set a car out there and not even have an engine in it. And he said, you could sell it just like that, like a brand new car, even without the engine. Why? Because they buy with their eyes. They won't even raise their hood on it. And I've seen that happen sometimes. Man, they just fall in love with it. Got to have it. Why? Man, it looks good. <laughs> right? It looks good. There was a guy over there in the book of Acts named Simeon. I said I was finished a while ago, but, but there was a guy named Simeon uh, in the book of Acts over there, and he was a sorcerer. You remember the story? And, I mean, he was a sorcerer. I believe it's in, in Acts chapter 7 over there. And, and man, as he, uh, as he got, uh, got to see in Paul, not Paul, but Peter and, and John and those guys, man, he got to watching them and seeing that, uh, that they were uh, uh, healing people and they were doing all those things. Now, Simeon got saved, and I believe he really got saved. But after he got saved, he didn't understand. And so once he got saved, he started hanging around those guys, and he saw them healing people. He saw some things happening. And he's like, man, I want to do that. I want to be able to do that. Why? Because he sat there and watched them. He said, he said, how much money does it cost for me to be able to do this? Yeah. And boy, Peter said it straight. He said, man... <laughs> He said, you wicked man. And he said him straight. And Simeon, Simeon said, he said, look, no, no, I, that ain't what I want. Please pray for me. Please understand, I don't want that. Why was it? Man, he was watching and he was seeing those things. And you know what? There's lost people. They're watching us. 
and they're seeing us. And they see a difference in us. If I could just tell you this, just make it real. Just make it real, right? Because you know what? Just like that altar was a witness of who those people were and who they were associated with, you and I are witnesses. I'm not saying you can take away sins. I'm not saying you can do anything like that. Lord knows I know better than that. But what kind of, what kind of appearance are we giving other people? Amen? What kind, of a, what kind of a message are we giving other people? Amen. Are we a functioning altar? <laughs> are we a functioning uh, Christian? Amen. Are we alive on the inside? Do we have something that we can offer, something that we can give? Amen. Are we alive? Are we real? See, that altar wasn't real. It was just an appearance thing. No sacrifices. No burnt offerings. No judgment. No fire. Amen. No fire. We like fires, don't we, Tommy? Amen. We like big fires, especially in the wintertime at night. You know, man, let's build a fire. Feels good. Warms you up. Amen. This one didn't have a fire. It didn't have a fire. It didn't have no power like that. It didn't do anything. Folks, we just need to make sure we're real. Amen. We just need to make sure we're real. Altar. That altar. The altar named Ed. A witness. A witness. Let's don't try to make God adjust to us. Amen. We should change to what he wants. We should obey what he wants. Because one day, one day, whether it's at the judgment seat of Christ or whether it's at the great white throne, we will stand. Amen. And give an account of our lives. Amen. Let me ask you if you will this morning, let's just stand and let's bow our heads and ask Miss Darlene to come play softly there on the piano. Just give you just a moment here of just, just maybe thinking about some of this. Maybe, maybe you know somebody like that. Maybe you know... Uh,